Let's analyze a partially elastic two-dimensional collision. So I have a couple billiard balls here. One of them is moving, one of them is the target. They crash into each other. Depending on the point at which they strike each other, they're gonna fly off at different angles. And what I know this time is actually both of the angles that they fly off at. And it might be surprising, but just knowing that actually determines their final speeds and it determines how much energy was lost in the collision. So let's get into the momentum analysis. It's just the same old concept, P initial equals P final. But in a two-dimensional space, that means my initial X component of momentum is equal to the final X component. And it also means my initial Y component is equal to the final y component. So I've got to analyze two different equations here, which looks good to me because we have exactly two unknowns. We're trying to find these final speeds. So let's do the x part first. p initial x equals p final x. p initial x equals p final x. And in my initial state, I have a mass of 0.5 and a velocity of 2 meters per second pointing to the right. I guess I'll keep units for a little while. In my final state, I have two masses moving. So I have this top one and the bottom one. I'll do the top first. And I have the mass times the x component of the velocity. That's going to be v1 final cosine 35. And then I have a 0.5 kilograms v2 final cosine 45 for the lower mass. So we can cancel out these 0.5 kilogram masses and I get my first important equation. I'm not going to write it with units because I'm getting ready to just do the algebra and I get 2 equals v1 final cosine 35 plus v2 final cosine 45. Okay, then I look at the y direction p initial in the y direction has got to be equal to p final in the y direction. So the initial y momentum is zero because everything was only moving horizontally. So that's equal to zero. So my final momentum must be zero. Now you could call this positive for this mass and negative for this mass and say they add up to zero. But it's easier if you just say that they have to have the same magnitude. We know they're pointing in opposite directions. So just using that kind of reasoning, I would write down for the top mass, the magnitude of its momentum is going to be 0.5 times V1 final sine of 35 degrees. And that's got to be equal to the magnitude of the downward momentum from the other mass. So 0.5 times V2 final times the sine of 45 degrees. I can cancel my 0.5s and I get a second important equation, V1 final sine 35 is equal to v2 final sine 45. So now we've got a fairly simple system of two equations and two unknowns. I'm going to go ahead and solve it with substitution by taking my second equation here and just switching to decimal approximations, and I'll, I'll just solve for v1 final. So v1 final has to be v2 final times sine 45 over sine 35. I get the V1 final is approximately 1.233 times V2 final. Then I'm going to take that value of V1 final and sub it into my first equation. So I end up with 2 equals 1.233 V2 final cosine 35 plus V2 final cosine 45. I'm going to factor the v2 final out of the right hand side and smash together all the leftover numbers. And I end up with 2 equals v2 final times 1.717. Finally, I solve for v2 final. And I get 1.16 meters per second. So there's my first speed. Now I can go back to where I substituted for v1 final. V1 final is 1.233 V2 final, and I find that V1 final is equal to 1.44 meters per second.
Finally, we're interested in what percentage of the kinetic energy was lost in this collision. So I'm going to look at the initial kinetic energy, and I get one half times the mass times the speed squared. And that's just half of a half, which is a quarter times four. So I get a nice even one joule of energy in the initial state. In the final state, two things are moving. I have one half times 0.5 times 1.16 squared plus one half times 0.5 times 1.44 squared and that gives me 0.855 joules so a little bit of energy has been lost what's the total amount lost do a little subtraction problem it's 0.145 joules lost Another way to say that is that it was 14.5% because the original amount was only one. 14.5% of the original amount of energy was lost.